making sure I can read my own handwriting because I wasn't a massive rush. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are in a double recording, well, four videos. Yeah, yeah, back to back, back to back to back to um, back. This is part three of that, but part one of the Cardigans. Yeah, an um, interesting man. Yeah, I mean, I guess, again, what did you know of the Cardigans before going into That one of those bands that I heard on the radio and I managed to join up the dots and establish that I knew a few songs by mm -hmm. a band. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to show some of these songs to Tom. And I showed one or two, I can't remember which ones. So, I definitely showed you You're the Storm. You're the Storm, yeah. Um, maybe Erase Rewind. Yeah, well. I think and I showed yeah. you Erase Rewind. Yeah. And um, so when we came to establishing which artists we should do, I was like, I did my research this time and checked how many albums there were. And I was like, hey, The Cardigans is a short discography. Let's do it. And I thought it'd be really fun. Uh, and it's, I, I think it was, it was a fun discography to do. So I'm, I'm quite happy to be here. What's, what about you, For Tom? me, I... Um, so I knew Loveful, obviously. Yeah. Um, which is a bit of a supermarket song. Indeed. <laughs> in the sense that it's played in supermarkets across the country <laughs> all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I will get to my thoughts on that song later. All right, save um, it for later. Yeah, I will save it for later. Um, and then I watched, I can't remember which came first, between you showing me the songs and me watching the Todd in the Shadows video. He has a really great video on, uh, he has a series called um, One Hit Wonderland, uh, where he looks at an artist that was a one hit wonder and looks back at their catalogue and how did they get to that point? What came after? What was, why was it that song, etc. Very cool series. I'd recommend it if you haven't watched it. I assume most people have. Um, and in that video, he was waxing lyrical about the song Sick and Tired, which is the first song on their first album. So I checked that out and I really enjoyed it. And then I think I showed it to you because you'd showed me Cardigan songs before. Vaguely remember that. Um, <laughs> and then other than that, yeah, so Loveful, Sick and Tired and whatever songs you showed me was all I knew going into this. One of the most blind discographies I've ever done. <laughs> um, probably since Roxy Music. Wow. I think most of the other ones I've known at least an album. Right. Um... I didn't even I didn't know a full album either, but that's pretty typical for me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so I think I think since Roxy Music, it, the first one where I I've been this blind. Right. So oh wow, interesting. I'm very intrigued. Then. Yeah. So what is your number six, Sam? Right. My number six is life, mm -hmm. and uh, in general, I did not get that much out of the early era. It's just not my thing, not my cup of tea, not what I knew of the cardigans. I knew it was going to be like that going in, and I knew I was going to have a bit of a speaker spell broken frame kind of thing. Uh, I just needed to decide which of the albums was going to be at the bottom. Uh, and sadly, it's life, because I think it's got less of the surprise element of Emmerdale, their debut, and it's just a little bit sickly. It's just sweet, 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 sweet. <laughs> I mean, I love Nina Person's voice um, as she as she matures and, and gets on. It's the same voice, but it's it's doing something a little bit more interesting. Sort of lounge music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not a lounger. No, no thanks. Um, I didn't. I just. Uh, it's a five. I'm not going down to pretend this level because it's just it's just doing a genre that I'm not really into. Mm. It's not bad music. I think if you liked that kind of thing, that sort of easy listening, something you can put on in the background kind of thing, then you're going to get something out of it. But overall, I just wasn't overly impressed. But I wasn't alienated either. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Middle of the road. Yes, yeah. five. My bottom is also a five. So we we haven't. Not a cardigan uh, pretender situation. No. Um, I'm not going early. In fact, I'm going as late as it goes. I'm going with Super Extra Gravity, Ooh. which I thought was a very clear bottom. Um, this is like very past their prime kind of music. It's flat. It's languid. I listened to it and then it ended and I realised I didn't remember anything about what I just listened to. Um, it's very, like, generic 2000s yeah. indie rock. Like, it's it's just it's just nothing, really. And it's their most least well-received album. I think that makes sense. Yeah, and then um, it disappeared into the void. Yeah, it just... 
didn't really find anything else to say about it. It's just they've done much better before this. Yeah. And this was just... It exists. Yeah, it does. It's a 5 out of it's 10. True. It is the definition of a 5 out of 10. Like, I will never think about this album ever again. But it wasn't bad. It no. was just... Whatever. Yeah. You know? My number 5 is Emma Dale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again... Not really my kind of genre, but it's it's doing something. It's still at a five, but it's still a little bit more interesting than life for mm -hmm. me. I think some of the songs are just a little bit. They're weird enough to comment about, especially when you pointed out Sabbath that they, yeah, Sabbath. they covered they, and it's the weirdest version mm. of a cover for it because the genre is so far removed mm. from what Black Sabbath were doing. Well, they also then did Iron Man on um, yeah on uh, the one after yeah first band on the moon yeah. Yeah, so there's something very peculiar going on, and overall that's why it's it, it it beat life, but I knew the easy listening stuff was going to go to the bottom, just because it's just not my cup of tea. Um, but yeah, I mean, I saved a few songs, uh, In the Afternoon, After All, Cloudy Sky, um, Our Space, Rise and Shine, I did save Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and I think it's I just... It's very cool, that version. Yeah. yeah, and I saved Last Song, I think, because the last song's called Last Song, and it, it made me laugh. <laughs> what a great review for the song <laughs> um, No, it was still a good song I wouldn't have actually done it for that reason It was alright But overall, just not not, some, not a genre Not a part of the cardigans I'm going to return to Okay, my number five Not too far away on this one My number five is Life The second album But I'm not going to be talking about Emmerdale For quite a while um, mm. Life though I do think definitely suffers from being Emmerdale 2. Yes. It's not doing anything new. Um, and it's considered their best album by a lot of people. I just don't get it. I think Carnival is a great opener. And in general, their openers are really, really good. Yeah. Um, Carnival is great. It's got these great funky guitars. It's got these big lush strings. I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be more of the same. I was Oh, this is going to be more of the same, but not as good. Um, the songwriting is nowhere near as good as on Emmerdale. Um, not bad. One great song, a couple other solid ones like Tomorrow. Um, but it's... Yeah, I just think that they have much better to offer. And, and from here on out, I'm going to enjoy these albums. But life was just a bit... I like Super Extra Gravity. It wasn't really offering anything new. And if it wasn't for Carnival, it would be a five. But that is... We'll find out where it lands on the songs video. I love that song. All so right. it gets a six, a low six. Right, interesting. I am going up to a six with my number four, um, which is not far removed from you. It's Super Extra Gravity, yeah. which, yes, you are right. It is just... It's a nothing album. <laughs> it's definitely end of career kind of yeah. stuff. It's just after... Obviously, you can tell by my ranking, I think that they've done better already. And they're just not continuing that vibe anymore. They're trying to, but like I said, it is very victim to that early mm. to mid-2000s production quality or lack thereof. Mm. It's, yeah, it's probably a victim of the time. Maybe a bit of better production would have made it slightly better. But overall... The songs like, themselves, though, are no, just... No, like, yeah. I think... I feel the same about this album as you did with, with Life. It's It's kind of they're trying to continue on from what they did with Gran Turismo and Long Gone Before Daylight and just try and smush them together. Mm. And it's not really working. Mm. Um, it's a six. It's only better than Emmerdale and Life just because that wasn't my cup of tea. Otherwise, I, I mean, if those albums weren't in this discography, I'd probably be with you in sharing mm. it as a bottom. Yeah. Um, it's a six just because it's more, it's more tailoring to Sam. Than the um the other two albums there. I guess what we should mention as well is that they are a band that were never, you know, they were never content to stick with the same sound. No. Which is I think why those two are at the bottom for me because those are their most sort of safe, yes, like, repetitive, repetitive albums. albums. So, yeah. Um. So like I said, top four. I enjoy all of these. So this might upset you, but my number four is Long Gone Before Daylight. Um, which. I have as a seven, and the gulf between this and life is quite large. And the gulf between this and my number one is not very large at all. <laughs> so it's sort of comparing... Well, that's something, I suppose. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sad to put it at number four, because I, there isn't really much splitting a lot of these. Um, but I, again, communication continues the trend. 
Great opener. It so a good. opener. And it's after a lengthy absence. They've been inactive for five years. Um, I think Nina Pearson have been doing some solo stuff and some more acoustic stuff, which is reflected in the sound of the album because you get a lot more mellow acoustic guitars than Gran Turismo, which was a bit sort of bombastic at times, <laughs> you know? It um, was. Uh, yeah, and I really think this is one of their best guitar albums. I think the guitars, especially from like the third album on, the guitar is a big emphasis in their sound. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be the Nina Pearson show. But my biggest takeaway was sort of the great sounds they were getting out of the guitars. Um, I, I'm actually not that big on You're the Storm. Um, I love the verses, and I just think the chorus is a bit underwhelming for me. It's trying um, to be bigger than it is. Yeah, it's not. I'm not big on that one. But the other single, for what it's worth, I really, really like. I really like the guitars on that one as well. Um, it's a step away from the more rock-based sounds of the previous two albums. Back in something a bit more mellow and, and loungy. Not quite like the first two albums. No. It's a bit more laid back. Um, yeah, it's not my favourite, but I would listen to it again. I enjoy it. 7 out of 10 for Long Gone Before Daylight. It's a good album. I would listen to it again. Oh, cool, cool. We're coming into metal territory now. Already? Yes. I know. Well, what, a, what a day we're having together. <laughs> the quick discography. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, my bronze medal, um, which I have predicted to be your number one. Now I'm not so sure. Um, it's first band on the moon. We've synced up, baby. Oh, all right. Interesting. Mm. Okay. So, <laughs> first band on the moon. With basically, this is where I join the chat when it comes to the cardigans. <laughs> yes. um, I am going to say that I think Love Fall is okay, but kind of overrated. I think overall the sound is really fun and I saved a lot of songs from the album like new, Your New Cuckoo, Bean It, Heartbreaker, Never Recover, Step On Me, obviously Love For Shay, Iron Man, interesting that's a cover, did not, did not detect it. Did you not it. recognise it? Oh, it's one of the most famous Sabbath songs. Yeah. I don't know Black Sabbath yeah, at all. It's just one of those songs that is in the public consciousness <laughs> that I've, I figured that you might know. That's interesting. Uh, maybe Drake we'll listen to the choke. original later on. Just maybe, and maybe that'll refresh my memory. <laughs> but then, then there's Drake Divide and Choke that I saved as well. Mm -hmm. Um, ultimately, I, I think that the first two albums that I've got, my top two, they're doing something a lot more interesting. And they, they're kind of, they stand on their own two feet as albums. They're both very different. Obviously, you've probably worked out what I've got in my in my top two now. But it's, they're very different sounds. And then I think that the first band on the moon is where they're first starting to step into this territory after doing Emmerdale and Life. And really, they're, they're shifting their identity totally Massively, from that. Yeah. So I'm kind of seeing this as like the debut from the cardigans that I know and love. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking this is a really good stepping stone into what they soon become. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it, it's it's got merit for that reason. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about it. Seven? It's, yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, still a seven. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I also have First Band on the Moon at yep. number three, also a seven. Um, it is their most... Well, maybe maybe you could argue for Gran Turismo as well, but their most 90s album. It's very 90s rock, and it's quite the left turn from the first two albums. It's quite danceable. It's got quite a, a yeah. few nice grooves, especially on the opening track, Your New Cuckoo. Um, I think Bean It, as you like to say, takes the bat on well. Um, <laughs> I actually I actually like Love, Love Fool quite a bit. Um, it's actually grown on me over time. All right. Um, because obviously it's like one of the songs that everybody knows, and then you're just like sick of it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just it's a nice chorus and like it's yeah, like, oh, it's nice. Um, I also think it's quite different to the rest of the album. It's sort of like a cheesy pop song, and the rest of the album is more rock based. I think. Mm. I also love the song that comes straight after it loses. Really powerful chorus. Yeah, I did save that one too. Yeah, um, explicit according to Spotify. And then yeah, in terms of that, sorry. In terms of the Cardigans covers of Black Sabbath, <laughs> Iron Man, I think, is a step below Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Um, but, you know, it's it's okay. Um, it's kind of charming that they were doing that. It's like, what's the colour we could do that would be the most different to our sound? Um, so, yeah, it's pretty good. Fun 90s album. Not the most consistent album. I think the top two beat it on that. But the, the highs are really high. Yeah. So um, it gets a seven. It's my last seven. So. Right. We do have one last chance at a sync up. I'm very surprised that it's made 
it that high in your list. Mm-hmm. I was really not expecting you to get anything out of it. I wasn't it. expecting you to get anything out of it. Either. Really? Yeah. My silver medal goes to Gran Turismo. And we've synced up again. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You've got Emma Dale as yeah, number one. I do, I do. I'll explain it. Yeah, it'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, I'm shocked. <laughs> uh, Gran Turismo is very um, heavy kind of rock in terms of the That's cardigans. why I think you wouldn't like it. No, but my favourite songs that have come, that I knew before going in have come from Gran Turismo. Mm, okay. So I was always kind, already kind of acquainted with the sounds and what I was going to encounter along the way. Um, but I actually got quite a lot out of the album and I got a few new discoveries as well. I mean, obviously, you know, I like Erasing Rewind and my favourite game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also really liked Paralyzed, Higher, mm-hmm. and Do You Believe. Those are the three really good ones that I learnt from yeah. the album. Um, but I also saved um, Explode, I saved Starter, I saved Hanging Around. I really enjoyed the album and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that you've got it as high mm-hmm. as well. Because I did not think, I thought, oh, this is not going to be a Tom sound. So is that an eight for you? It is an eight. It's also an eight for me. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm currently doing a deep dive into 1998. Right. So this was good ammunition. <laughs> good, <laughs> it make yeah. my top 25, who knows? Um, Exciting. There's, yeah, you, I think this is, this does make sense that I like it, because I love 90s music. And I think this True. is the most interesting blend of sounds. Because you've got the heavy rock, you've got the, the electronic stuff that was really new for them, like the... Yeah. The, the, yeah. Um, and the sort of the trip-hop influence from bands like Porter's Head and Massive Attack and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely their moodiest album, most atmospheric album, um, which works for me. Um, and then it, it has bangers on it as well, like Erase Rewind and My Favourite Game, uh, especially the latter, really like those. Um, and yeah, it's very unique within their discography. Um, and yeah, it's sort of got a mix of like good pop songs, but weird stuff as well, which I always like. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, so yeah, you've worked out now. Mm-hmm. We. It's funny that we've synced up on two and three because our number ones were not ranking too no, high for each other. Yeah. 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 I guess it does kind of make sense that you like Emmerdale. And you probably think it makes sense that I like Long Gone Before mm-hmm. Daylight. That's my number one. I've given it a nine. Um, originally, when I first put my list together, I had Gran Turismo at number one. Mm-hmm. And I had Long Gone Before Daylight at number two. Mm-hmm. Um, because Long Gone Before Daylight has a very specific mood. Yeah, It's very deep. It's quite introspective. Um, and it's covering heavy subject matter Mm. and when i first listened to it i really wasn't in that frame of mind and then i came back to some of the songs trying to work out my songs list and i guess i was in more in that kind of deep and pensive frame of mind um because oh my god i think that long gone before daylight is poetry Mm. i think that this it feels very emotional and very raw um, and yet it's also very layered at the same time. And I, I'm glad that you commended at least the guitar on the album because I think it's very moody. I enjoyed the album. Like yeah. I said, the gap between the gap, one yeah. and four is not big. Like, And I just, when I was listening to those heavy hitters, I was thinking, oh my God. And I do recall listening to the album as a whole and I thought it's a really pleasant experience. But I thought, oh, Gran Turismo is definitely better because of the songs that I really like from it. But then I sort of started gelling more with the songs I liked from Long Gone Before Daylight. And as time went on, I was like, I've got to be honest with myself here. Long Gone Before Daylight, in that, when you're in the right frame of mind, it's like listening to Just For A Day. If you're in the right mood, Or any Elliot amazing. Smith album. Or any Elliot Smith album, yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. And that's something you can't, I can't say about Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo's brilliant. It's- yeah. It's not beautiful. I think Gran Turismo is more cool. Yeah. But but Long Gone Before Daylight is more, yeah, thoughtful, maybe. Maybe I should listen to it again, because I didn't really pick up on much of the lyrics, because I've only heard it once. For me, usually lyrics are something that I get acquainted with over time. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give it another shot. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, so my number one yeah, is, talk to me. <laughs> is an eight. So I don't, I, I'm still yet to hit a nine in 2023. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, to me, an eight is a great album that I would like to own, that I would happily have in my collection that I will listen to again and again. Right. Emmerdale, um, obviously I mentioned 
My Love of Sick and Tired, which is the opening track, mm -hmm. which might colour my perception on the album. But to me, where life disappears into this, like, sappy, vapid, like, bleh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this album is a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun listening to the, is, the pop is. songs on this album. There's like a blend of like lounge jazz, sort of like jangly guitars and also yeah. like traditional pop hooks. Um, it's well ranked to higher than life. Yeah, it's got a lot of sort of youthful energy. And I actually think this is my favourite album for Nina's vocals. <laughs> I love the the innocence she has on here. Um, and I just, I think there's tons of highlights. Sick and Tired, obviously. Rise and Shine is so good. In the Afternoon, Black Letter Day, Celia Inside. It just flows nicely. It's easy breezy, you know, it... But it isn't. It doesn't feel vapid like life does at times. It, it, the songs impact me and stick with me and get stuck in my head. And the Sabbath, bloody Sabbath cover, <laughs> is fascinating because listening to the original song, that was because obviously before then, um, Black Sabbath were just known as like a big heavy metal band, and then that song came around and it's got that bit in the middle that's a bit more ooh, with the acoustic guitar and stuff. I think they heard that and were like, what if that was the whole song? <laughs> Which is really interesting. It's really interesting to, to, to look at it that way. And I love the original. It's probably my favourite Black Sabbath song. So if this was bad, it could have tanked the entire album. Mm. Like I saw that track on the track, so I thought, oh God, that's going to suck. <laughs> but it's actually, I actually enjoy it quite a lot. Um, yeah, as a debut goes, it's a lot better than I expected. It's just stuck with me. It's catchy, it's fun. It's easy to listen to without being like nothing like my bottom two were um and yeah i i enjoyed the cardigans i didn't love them but i enjoyed them it was fun it yeah. was nice oh good i'm right. glad we got something out of that yeah, your dog enjoyed the cardigans yeah well. no e even the small dog loves that <laughs> yeah so um to conclude different lists but that's that yeah. happens a lot with us and <laughs> yeah weirdly very common ground near the top just not at the very yeah. top yeah, so look out for a songs list. If you're annoyed that neither of us like life as much as you do, tell us why you like it. Yeah, go Give on. Give us your rankings. I would yeah. like to see. Because I think We're they're, listening. they're one of those bands that have different rankings, depending on who you ask. Yes. Like Roxy Music. Quite. I feel like most people have a different ranking. Because um, the Cardigans, they changed a lot over, and, the, yeah, over their time. It's not like they have one album that everyone loves, and it's not like they have one album that everyone doesn't like. So yeah. it's sort of like... It could go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. So... Thank you for watching and look out for the songs video. Take care now.